Whatever. You're a history hand cock? History major. Yeah, that's why I thought. I was like, because anonymous, yeah, I'm like, anonymous. oh, it must be. No, like, but he means, he means uh, not saying something anonymously or signing it is what he means. Oh. <laughs> right, I always word it like. He doesn't mean the anonymous as the infiltration group that you're thinking of. And this is a, a rival anti-terrorist group. <laughs> anonymous or John Hancock. Hancock, sometimes you put a D. <laughs> do you? It's or like, do you never when he signed the Declaration of Independence? Well, let me ask you this question. Spell beer garden. B-E-I-R-G-A-R-T-E-N. <laughs> spell, spell garden. G-A-R-D-E-N. Sometimes there's a D. You gotcha. Uh, yeah. That's Isn't a good that? point. Derek D. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's a day. Sometimes there is a I day. I stand corrected. I go anonymous. <laughs> We're not there yet. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> we'll get there. Oh. Radio Shack, Manhattan Mall. Hi, Radio Shack? Yes. You guys are still open? Yes. I knew it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I told you. I told you, Radio Shack is still in business. <laughs> well played, sir. Oh, God damn it. Sophisticated podcast, baby. <laughs> now tell me something good. We're going to call you back now. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? PBR Podcast, Mike Polano, Derek D., Joe Gatto. What's up? And if you Google Radio Shack right now, it comes up right on the website. It says Radio Shack, open, and here to stay. <laughs> ah, nice. There you go, man. Man, so if you listen to the A side of this uh, this B side, we had a little dispute about the Radio Shack. Well, I was saying on the A side that it, it like they closed a bunch of stores, but it's, you know, it's not closing like for good good. No, they like reinvented themselves to be like boutique-y. They carry like eight things now, and, and it's still like a wire, batteries. <laughs> but that was the thing. Like, they used to carry the everything. everything yeah. It's like the weirdest logo, too. Did they change the logo up? I don't know. I it was mean, like the circle with the off centered R. That's what still is. It still yeah. is. They're still rocking that. All right. Wait, I, so have you been in a Radio Shack since the transition? I mean, Radio Shack is exclusively where I buy my remote control vehicles. Well, <laughs> <laughs> if, you oh, need, if you ever need a remote control vehicle, I go there. <laughs> it used to be. You remember they used to, they used to have a really big selection of um, electronic keyboards. Remember that? Oh yeah, um, that was like their thing. They had like I, a thousand of them. I'd go in there and play. I love coffee. I love tea every time. Yeah, there you go. What's uh, the other one? What's the other one you would always play with people? That chopsticks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, you were in the boy band. I don't know. Which <laughs> uh, Menergize. You, know, you know what I'm talking about. You just got Menergize. What is the name of that? that, that uh, Are you doing that song? Loom, loom. <laughs> no, it's like one do person do plays, one plays one part and you play the other. Oh, Chopstick. Oh, no, no, no. Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul. Heart and soul. Heart and soul. Oh, I thought Chopsticks. And I'm Give not, a little bit of Heart and Soul. Oh, different Heart and Soul. And, and, and not and Huey Lewis either. That wasn't <laughs> Huey Lewis. No, I know a different one. Heart and Soul. Huey Lewis has a Heart and Soul song named Heart and Soul. Well, we're oh, just jumping right into wow. it. <laughs> I'll give you one better about Radio Shack. They, yep. they had the Tandy computer. Oh, yes, they did. Right? Yes, they did. And that's why Radio Shack's good. If you put it all together, they had Tandy. Who was selling uh, Apple or Commodore at the time? Commodore. That bet you that company still, Commodore was selling Commodore? Yeah. No, no, no. Commodore was the other, was the not Tandy. Well, who was selling that and where are they now? They did. They're dead, too? Commodore? Yeah, they're done. I had a Commodore 64. Well, that my was parents such, did. So pimp. <laughs> oh, that was so great. Old school. My next door neighbor had a Tandy. And we played one game on it. I knew this chick named Tandy. Wait, wait, which neighbor? Jason Joseph. Okay. He used to play Spider-Man on it. He had a Spider-Man on his Tandy, and I used to make him go. He wasn't a video gamer, and I was. So I always used to make him play, and he didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Tandy. Radio Shack's dead. I don't care what you say. No one's going there. I haven't been there in a long time. Look at all the wires on this table. Yeah. There are more wires on this table than said Radio Shack. How many and not you? one of them was <laughs> purchased from Radio Shack. Well, you know. Doesn't that by default put them out of business? Well, no, because <laughs> well, if, they if, sell all the things. If, just <laughs> if you were the only person yeah, buying wires. Yes, that's right. I think that most people like me, think like me, do the same things that I do, and they don't buy their wires at Radio Shack. You know what? I, uh, I used to go to Radio Shack also for when you needed your raw materials for your science projects in school. Like you needed to like, remember when you made the car battery out of like a potato? Yes. Did you guys ever see <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had to go there and get that stuff. <laughs> a novice electrician. Wait, Radio Shack sells vegetables? Yeah, they have a whole produce section. In the back, you got to pass the doorbells. <laughs> <laughs> I hate those bells, man. And, 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 the, and the cabinets with all the little drawers with like like little, yes, little like nodes and stuff. I don't know what's going on in there. <laughs> little plugs and stuff. Uh, well, welcome to PBR Podcast, everybody. <laughs> this is uh, the B side of episode one. So if, if you like the A side, you're listening to the B. Yeah, thanks for and coming. Thanks for coming. Again, We're back. I'm uh, Mike Polano. 
And this is my man, Derek D. That's me. And my man, Joe Gatto. That's me. So that's us. That's our voices. That was a big complaint. Like a big complaint about podcasts that start. People always go, you got to introduce yourselves. I, I never liked to do it that way. I always like to fire it around and then converse. And the first time, I don't know if you noticed, the first time you guys talk, I always will say your name. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Well, you're, you're, you're the, you are the conductor of this orchestra. I, I, yeah, I am. But like, I, I, get, I get that. But I, I don't like to go, I'm Mike Polano. And, and then, then yeah. Derek go, and I'm Derek D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, wink at the camera. That's a lot of people do that. Uh, and I think it's just a stylistic choice. I, I think it's better. Take the reins, just go, hey, I'm Mike Polano, it's Derek D and Joe Gatto. I mean, that's right. just. Right. You get the intros right out of the top. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the sweaty handshake. Let's get it over with. And here we go. <laughs> Let's jump in. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's how we're rolling it. So welcome. Thank you for coming. The, the Wait, are you saying that when we had that whole Radio Shack banter, no one knew who was making the good jokes? I, I don't know. Well, think about it. <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, hold on a second. I mean, we have a lot of, there's new listeners here. Hi, we love you guys. Yep. True. But then we have the, the PBR Posse that's from the old school. What, what? Hashtag PBR Posse. So they know. They know what the deal is and my voice is a little hoarse, so you're getting a little, That's right. getting a little different than what I normally sound like. How many uh, how many times are you going to say that and with a dramatic pause? That was my third time. And did I pause there? There was no pause, but you saw it in your eyes. <laughs> Gata, we learned something from episode one. I mean, let them defend it. Like, I mean, right? There, you do pause a little bit. I don't <laughs> you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I, I, I challenge you, listener, to go to uh, fast, uh, FastLaneDaily.com. No, YouTube.com slash FastLaneDaily. There, too. Go there. and then, <laughs> Or you can go to PBRPodcast.com uh, and check out FastLane Daily. And let's let them decide if you're Captain Kirk hosts that show or not. <laughs> no, you'll find it's this dashing young man named Derek <laughs> D. Mm-hmm. That does not pause often. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was for that's 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 drama. <laughs> you don't know good drama, Michael. That's the problem. You know, some would say that I'm bullying him right now. Some would say, but I don't. Those people would be wrong. You're just having a good time. <laughs> I am right. Yeah. You know what? You know, it's if somebody's on board with it, it's not bullying, and that's the big problem with it. People don't understand that part of it. There's a fine line, man. There's a fine line there. Like some don't. Some people act like that. Like Derek's laughing right now, but he deep down inside might not be okay with it. Yeah, how do, you, how do you decipher? You know, he should he should be he should be strong enough to know that he doesn't have to be okay with it. I mean, that's a big thing. That's a big thing. Are we gonna jump right in? I mean, right yeah. I mean, me? the revolution of this episode is is really about bullying and anti bullying, right? You're, I mean, Joe, you're you're a spokesperson for the movement. Yeah, I would say I'm an anti bullying spokesperson. Spokesperson. Didn't you just do something in Chicago? I right? did. Yeah, I was at uh, Chicago Comic Con and uh, I spoke on a panel there, which was a good time. I got to meet people. I spoke on one here at the New York Comic Con. I'm probably going to speak at the San Diego one, um, hopefully, if it all pans out. Um, but the the defining factor for me for bullying is if everybody's not having fun, it's bullying. You know, it's a one side. It can't be one sided. If people are the quote unquote bully, quote unquote victim. I mean, if everybody is having fun, we get here about our show all the time. What are you talking about? Your show is all about bullying, meaning practical jokers. Yeah. And uh, I'll say it is nothing to do with bullying. Everyone has opted in. If right. you opt into being part of the fun or being part of what's going on, then it's not bullying. Yeah, that that's ridiculous. Yeah, you're all. You're, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're like you bully you bully Mur. I don't bully Mur. Mur is one of my one of my best friends. You know, right. and, and we do it, and uh, I love him like a brother, and. He is there to be made fun of and is willing to do it. And if a line is ever crossed, uh, an immediate apology would come, you know? Um, so. is, that, is, is that line ever crossed? Like maybe yeah, it gets there. You get, right, you get caught up in it and, you, and you, you push it a little too far. You, you, make, you, make, you, you think you're still having fun making fun of the person. And they start taking it to heart. And then you got to you know, back up the reins and apologize. That happens. Derek, do you ever feel like that on this show? Well, first off, I'm, I, uh, no, I don't feel that when you guys are talking about my pausing. <laughs> Deep down, I'm fine with it. I mean, are you sure? Like, I, I, like, like Joe says, I, I bought in. Do um, you need a tissue? Uh, listen. <laughs> you look my, upset right now. You look upset that I'm not calling you Michael. <laughs> yes, I'm that's call right. It, like, I, like, I am, actually. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, there, there's, there's times, you know, I guess in my life where I feel bullied and stuff. But, you know, at the same time, it's... It, me and my friends, like we'd always make fun, just like you do, just like, like in Practical Jokers, all those guys are best friends and you guys make fun of each other. Me and my good friends, we do that and it's fine. Like, yeah, if you went, go a little overboard, whatever. But we were never those guys that like would just be in high school and see a kid walking by and be like, hey, what's up, you pansy? Like, we didn't do that. Like, if anything, we like, there was this one guy, Ronald Gillen, big, big, overweight dude. And uh, 
outside of school and like middle school, ki- kids would come up to him and he would just stand there by himself. He's a very eccentric kid. And they would be like, what's 473 times 962? And he would just probably make up a number, but they would just, they would always bother him and pest him because he was like really smart and everything. And in high school, like we just realized me and my friends were like the popular kids. We had like a couple parties. Why did Ron over? Ron, he was dancing and everything. Like, and his parents were so excited that we did that. Like, we're not, we weren't about like putting anyone down, just having a good time. Mm-hmm. You know, and he was so stoked that like he, you know, we invited him and, and came out. None of this was stuff on, was on social media or anything. Yeah. We weren't looking for anyone to be like, oh, that's really great of you guys. We should, you know, you're going to go on Ellen now. It's like, no, it's just, we, so we, we saw people like messing with him and you, don't mess with Ron, man. He's a good dude. He's just chilling. So what? He doesn't play any sports. So what? He's really smart. So what? He's eccentric. You know, just, and that makes you feel good. It's always better to do it the other way. Yep. Yeah. Well, you decided to do something. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what's important. I, I'd hate to be the one here to play as devil's advocate. Don't be, don't be afraid. It's a, it's a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't agree with bullying per se, but I do have an issue. I understand. With, I know what you're going to say. Keep going. Go ahead. Say it. No, no. I don't want to cut you off. You just did. I feel like I agree with you. Not only did you cut me off, but you paused while you did it. And you, <laughs> cut me off and you made it even longer. You stretched the cut off. Yeah. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? You got to merge in traffic. <laughs> you didn't merge. You just got One no. car went. You bumper to bumper. Yeah. Like the bus is going in the Lincoln Tunnel. You're on the shoulder at this point. I'm right into the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go. Sorry. I forget what I was. My fault. No, you said you're. you're uh, no, I, what I was gonna, what I wanted to get at is, uh, I guess on the other side of it is, it, this is about the uh, this show is always about the the revolution right the path from a to b like where we're going and in bullying i think i'm not saying bullying is good on any level what i do see though in society is is it becoming dare i say the pussification of america because of the way people are being raised now uh you know what i'm saying like how i'm trying to say the world war ii the baby boomer boomers that generation was hardcore our parents and their parents the way people were raised, it took, it, you know, I hate to say it took a village to raise a child, but when we were kids, your whole neighborhood helped raise you. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That doesn't exist anymore. I could go out with my, I'm the last of five, kids everywhere on my street in my town. We could go out and play in the woods and not come home and travel all over the neighborhood until Uncle Bill Shelf, who wasn't my uncle, he just lived a block over, would whistle, whistle. and every, <laughs> oh, every oh, kid nice. would yeah. go back home, right? That's what my dad I, did, yeah. I'm sure you guys have very similar of course, situations. Yeah. 100%. And we all grew up kind of like tough, like we could handle ourselves. Um, if I, it's like if, a coddling of... Well, yes, if I got in trouble at school or if a, a teacher called uh, my parent, my parent would come, they would listen, but they would always, I'd always get it. Right or wrong, like they would figure it out, but they would never ever attack the, uh, uh, the person that was you know, implying they did something. Whereas today, I feel like that's completely reversed. And I don't know if it's a positive or a negative, but how, how do you feel about it? You know what, I'm, you're looking at me, Gatto. No, I'm just taking like I'm I'm taking your point of view. I, I, I think you're insane. People who say the pussification of America, I get that. I get people worrying about kids becoming soft, but it's a very different world. It's a much harder world than when we grew up, right? With social so, media and all that stuff. That's the number one contributor, right? You used to get made of fun of by three people in high school. This kid you're talking about, the, the, the fat kid that was good at math, right? Yeah. Well, how many kids are in your high school? Yeah, I mean, it was just them, right. really. It was them, was it? Yeah. right? You know, it, it, it literally gets captured and shared to millions of people to a point where the, the kid who is emotionally unstable, you know, because they're a kid and they're going through all the things that kids do, they feel totally overwhelmed and helpless. What I hear the most from any kid is that they feel that they're alone. And, and any positive feedback I get is like, I feel like you get me. I feel like you understand. Listen, I was straight up bullied when I was younger. Mm-hmm. I was a nerd. I was a straight up skinny nerd that liked to play adventure games and make up things in my mind and run around my backyard pretending I was an elf. Like, that's how I used to play <laughs> with my friends. Yeah. Like, that's what I used to do. You know, I was on the math team. I was a mathlete. I was on the bowling team. You know what I mean? I didn't, I wasn't popular at all. And I just found a way to deal with it with humor, you know? So yeah. I think everybody just, that, that, that's a, a big component is that the kids today don't really have a means or they necessarily can comprehend how to deal with it because it's on such a larger scale. But I, I agree with that. I'm sorry, Derek. I don't mean, I don't mean to cut you off, but I, I agree with what you're saying, but I also look at it in the other light. Like we were running around the neighborhood. Uh, there, are, there are parents that don't let their kids do that. They don't have the freedom to get out and learn how to act in those social situations, how to um, be who they are, to defend themselves, to defend others, right? That, like, that doesn't exist anymore. Like, kids have play dates. You can't just ride your bike to town shops anymore, 
right? You have to be dropped off by your parents. Um, they, they won't, you know, so I mean, does one interact with the other? Yeah, you have that social media aspect and that technological aspect, but is the parent, has the parenting changed so much? Because you're keeping those kids inside. You're not protecting them from social media. I mean, also on the same time, and I agree with what both you guys are saying. At the same time, though, uh, on the social media aspect, yeah, it, it could be terrible, but also could be awesome on the other end people could come back and it could it could you know people support, help. you could find so that support a online lot of support online strangers. too yeah yeah but but the thing talking about the pussification of america i'd rather just say like sometimes it's a coddling thing and i don't know if this I, I feel like this is kind of a bullying thing where like in little league baseball and stuff like that like my nephew my brother had to put him in a different league that was more competitive because the one league was just basically like everyone wins no one loses uh, everyone gets a participation I, trophy about, and it's more like no I mean, it's it's not good. And it's not. It's not that you're 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 a bad kid or anything. You're just. It's. It's not that you're a bad athlete. It's just you're learning competition and you're learning healthy competition. Yeah. As long as long as the coaches aren't douchebags, but at the same time, it was like my brother had to shell out like a bunch of money because he just wants my nephew is interested in baseball. He wants to play like, you know, you know, a, 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 on a league where you're rewarded for doing well and not necessarily like rewarded everyone for being there. wins. And you know what? It's not three strikes you're out. It's Keep going until you hit the ball. No, it's three strikes, you're out. Right. Four balls, and, you walk. And, and that's the way it is. And you're completely not setting the children up for rea reality and the real world. Agreed. My favorite line from the movie Incredibles is, uh, um, everybody's special is just a way of saying that nobody is. Yeah, sure. That's, you know great. I mean? that's a great line. It, yeah. It's just, it's, it, it's true. And But I think that only relates to a certain aspect. I mean, parenting, you know, now, now I'm a parent, right? Mm -hmm. So... To a three week old, so doesn't not, she don't she doesn't know shit yet. But um, but to to parent in this world is way different than the parent. Like parents nowadays have to worry about so much more than our that's like true. our moms worried about iron and dad's shirt and having dinner on the table. Like that's all they worried about. Think about you know the one income household is a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. You know moms are working and not raising their kids. Parents don't raise their kids anymore. You know what I well, mean? Parents, the parents don't have the impact that our parents did. There aren't a bunch of uh, Italian mothers sitting on the steps in Brooklyn watching their kids play. Nobody's doing that. Nobody's home. You either have nannies that are doing it for money and they're not their kid, or you have them in after school programs, or, you know, the biggest impact in their life is always, and with us too, it was your friends, right? Mm -hmm. But you're right. These friends are picked for you with play dates. Yeah. You don't find like people. So that 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 is a big. It's got to be. I mean, we're we're obviously we come from that era. It's got to be tough growing up right now. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just, it's just, it it has to be. I mean, I I remember growing up. You know, I I was I was bullied too. Luckily, I had a strong personality, so I kept like my my close friends were really like what kept me going. Like, cause I looked different. I had a really big birthmark on the right side of my nose until I was 16 years old. And, you know, I shit nose. You walk in the street, people are like, hey, you put your nose in a pile of shit. It's like, no, man, it's just a birthmark. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I had a skin graft surgery and everything. And but like when I would go to Disney World and I'd be in, you know, those lines where it's just like this. Every time you come around, all the kids just stare, all the kids just stare. And but like from a young age, I was just always taught like, you know, God kiss you on your nose. Don't worry about it. Like my yeah, parents yeah, yeah. were very strong, you know, with me. And I, I guess my personality, I just rose above it. But it was my friends that kept me like grounded, not from just like being like, this sucks, you know, this is the yeah. worst ever. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but you, you, you would you get grown. I was, I was getting an award at an American Legion in fifth grade for a coloring contest that I beat like the whole district out in. And uh, it was like, it was drawing and coloring or something. And uh, I get up there to receive the award in front of like, I don't know, 300 people. And on the mic, the guy's like, oh, what, the, what is that on your nose? No and shit. my dad, like you said, his blood was boiling. Like I was just up there like, it's my birthmark. I just, you gonna give me that trophy yeah, here? That trophy. Yeah. That's like, a true story. 100% true That's story. Crazy, man. It's like on the mic. I mean, you could be like, hey, man. Yeah, <laughs> do you need to go, do you but why even do that? What is that doing? Uh, yeah, it's and it's like he put the mic in my. I'm like, it's. well, see, there's there's an example of uh, he bullied you, a, but, a grown ignorant, man bullied ignorant, a child. But well, that ignorant. wasn't. I don't necessarily is say it, that was bullying. It was ignorance. It was ignorance. Bu bullying is with purpose. Bullying is not ignorant. Bullying is you, you're doing it to make someone feel bad. Yeah, the kids who called me, you know, shit, shit nose. Shit, that, those kids are bullying. Shit, root off the red nose. Shoot off shit nose reindeer, whatever they used to call me. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, those, those that's that I would say is, is a example of a bullying. Yeah, yeah, I got this one kid back though, real good. It was, <laughs> a, you bully it was in middle school, and they, this kid he like he, he would he would rip on me all the time, and like 
t- take my notebook and stuff. And, and when we're getting changed for gym, when there's no real like, adults around, but then they would always like put the key in the light because it wasn't like actual switch. Yeah, yeah. Put the key in, and people would put like something in there and and knock it down. The lights were off, and they would yell "roll call." Be pitch black. So one time that happened, he was right next to me, just swung off, got him right in the face, and I took out it. Took off <laughs> out of there. He never knew, <laughs> it, was knew it was me. Shot no. in the dark. I just remember me and like yo. He was pissed. Rashad. F you if you're ever listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do you happen to know his Twitter handle? No, we'll I think, egg he, him. We'll I think egg he died him. or he's in jail. Okay. Honestly, yeah. okay. He was well, a, in that a case, straight loser. He's on in that case, uh, at the Derek D hashtag egg. Let's just throw it at you. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how many of those Bring it got. on. Right? Gotta get your, follow, your, your Twitter followers <laughs> to throw eggs at Derek. No, that's not nice. We've all probably Is, that, is that bullying on so, can, Is that bullying? I don't know. I've never heard of this hashtag. I think uh, we do it all the time, and we usually do it towards Derek, but <laughs> we've fun. done it to other people. Uh, mo- mostly fun. as a fun joke. No, that's, a f- that's a fun joke. That's yeah, that's so where does the line do a, I don't think you understand. I don't point. understand yeah. it. And, and I, 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 don't think, I don't think you uh, necessarily get... Yeah, I, I mean, the, and it's not, it's not a reflection of you. It's the term bullying is definitely... There's definitely a umbrella part of it where people just like to stuff it under. And, and then there's the core of it where I think that's where the real problem lies, where you need change. Um, and I think that part of it is where people like are doing it with purpose. Those people right. are the dicks. Those people are the people that need to change. And you hear all the time, too, another thing, like just speaking about that is, you know, uh, people say that uh, if you're if you're a, a victim, you need to, you know, you need to do this, this and this. The, the truth is the victim doesn't need to do anything. The bully needs to stop. Right. So people are like, you need to go get a parent and, and do help. You need to do this. And they put all this pressure on the victim where it's not the victim that's doing anything wrong, guys. It's not the victim's fault. It's the bully's fault. And the way that you contribute to that by being a bystander is if you're not going to do anything, don't stand there and watch. Basic rule. Right. The bully's not going to bully in front of nobody. The bully's doing it to get a rise out of people, to make people laugh, to do whatever. If, you, if you're going to make the decision not to help the person walk away, don't stand there and watch and watch right. how fast that bullying stops. I've seen it a million times, and I've heard it a million times from people. So, and behind every bully is a parent. That's right. That probably is a bully. That's uh, that that's that's sometimes true, or it's just a parent that you know naive. I, I, yeah, yeah, naive thinks that you know kids. Uh, you'll hear boys will be boys, kids will be kids, and all that stuff. And and well, that's all good and well until you know people are really getting hurt in a real way. Right. So I mean, ultimately, the problem comes can come from the adult. Like, the adults are no better. They might not do it the same way kids do it, or they do. Like, the story Derek told about the overweight guy dancing, right, on the last episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they may do it that way, or they may do it secretly. Like, you don't, you don't know. Yeah, and that was also an example of a, po- a, a real negative thing Can turn that positive. turned into a huge positive right. that just, like, blew any negative out of the water. You yeah. know, like, that's an extreme example, but that's what can happen, which is good. That, that guy feels like a million bucks, as he should. Do you think there's change on the horizon? Do you, do you think, like, this will stop ever? I think uh, human nature is to be assertive and aggressive and... Uh, be you know machismo will always be out there and stuff i think that's and that's that's the way it is so no i think the problem is i think the thing that will change is just awareness that people realize how wrong it is and the real damage you're doing i think people just don't understand the damage you do you know it's so much easier to be nice to somebody it takes so much more effort to be to <laughs> yeah. actively go, to actively be like how am i going to get this person like you know just if you, you have to put so much more work in to be a bully, I think, mm-hmm. than just to be somebody who's... If you don't like somebody, it's fine. You don't have to like everybody. That's the other thing. You don't have to like everybody. Right. So there's, I, there's so many people I don't like. Right. But you don't go out of your way to, right. to do stuff to them. No. Right. Yeah. If you don't like them, don't do it. And there's another saying that, that really... You know, remember those uh, inspirational posters back in the day that were like always up on your wall? It was like a falcon and it was like yeah. pride and yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, my my uh, one, one uh, that I had was it was three... Uh, it was three... Um, fighter jets in the sunrise and I had it over my bed and it just said winners surround themselves with winners and then I had that over my bed and at the time I, w- I, didn't, have me- I didn't have really any friends and then my mother uh, said to me she's like you just don't have any 
winners to surround yourself with right now. Don't worry about it. Like my mother was big on a clean slate. Like if people in your lives that were losers, get rid of them. Yeah, people just do it. The You'll find people that'll do it. And that's a way the internet is great, is that you're able to find people with light. I promise you that on the internet, there is somebody that can relate to exactly what you're going through. 100%. You could find a friend by just anything. If you're into any like, you know, things that people call nerdy, there's a million nerds out there that are into the same nerdy thing. You know what I mean? Um, so you could find people, you could find people of likeness that you just surround yourself with and then you click with them. You know, that's true. Don't be afraid of being alone. Yeah. yeah. And, and I mean, yeah, think about that, like online. Um, that, yeah, that's that's the, another positive aspect of, of the social media world and stuff. You yep. relate to people that way. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's so much easier to be positive yeah. and negative, man. Yeah. Yeah. People just love to be negative. They like to drag. You know, people want to drag other people down. That's so true. Right? Jealousy. They get. They get. They get. A, some people get a high out of it, and it's so. St- I, I can't. I can't personally relate to it because I think it is the stupidest thing in the world. I think I agree with what you're saying. I mean, the energy to create, to create something, to be positive, to do something in a good light for a good reason. Put your energy there, right? Don't take all of that energy and try to hurt, to detract, to take away. Like it doesn't make sense like what are you gaining yeah right and i don't know i don't know why people do the things they do i i mean i I, from listening to this conversation and all the episodes that we've had together like i kind of feel like i I could be misconstrued as a bully on the show but i think i'm doing it with my friends being having fun with them you know almost like the 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 comment you made joe about the uh, jokers you know but i think like you know this is the way we do things amongst friends and people need to realize that nobody walks away from the stable feeling bad so nobody's being nobody's being bullied it's 100 percent like uh this might be an extreme example i don't know if it's a good example but uh i was watching like rap battles today and these dudes going at each other right right that's a great example going at each, like ripping each other apart and i was like oh this is crazy and it's good and then at the end shake hands like oh dude that part where you said this you killed it yeah. they're both in the same wavelength yeah so that's not that's not a bullying situation and that's just like dude you got me that was great like that one line even 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 if it was like really bad like talking about someone being fat or something it's both understood by both sides and at the end they're just shaking hands and and that's an art form you know they're putting that into yeah. positivity yeah you know? the, the they're, best. they're entertaining they're, yeah. they're you know they're doing something they, they love and yeah. they're and they're out there entertaining others yeah they're the not bullying each other of that <laughs> entire Derek d dissertation the fact that he watches rap battles yeah i mean, I mean let's uh, not let that slip through I, the cracks everybody I, I think everyone realized it <laughs> right <laughs> dude they're pretty good <laughs> oh man not only the one guy looks like jiggy i said jiggy a tweet Did you? Oh, this dude named roan he, this white dude he crushes he looks just like jiggy <laughs> this is actually really good what is jiggy's handle on Twitter. At the Jiggy. Uh, it's somewhere. Is it? It's, it, a, it's at Jiggy. Jigger. At Jiggy Comedy? That's it's a, at Jiggy it Comedy. At Jiggy Comedy, yeah. Hashtag eggs. Let's throw there eggs at Jiggy. Right? <laughs> give him the jigs. Get, give Jiggy some eggs. All right, that lovely sound, everybody. You like to hear that sound? Derek, do you like that sound? Oh, that's a fresh sound. I haven't heard it in a while. Joe, it's good to be back. <laughs> Joe, got do you like that sound? Uh, I, I don't know, but I'm very happy all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that sound indicates a game we like to call top or bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read uh, two terms. And you guys are going to tell me, in your opinion, which one's on top, which one's on the bottom. You ready to play? Let's do it. See what I did there? I'm in. Uh, number one, Derek, top or bottom. First Amendment rights or censored? <laughs> First Amendment rights. Yeah, well, well, how, top. Why? why? Censored on the bottom. Freedom of speech, my man. That is, is that simple? I mean, it's. It, I think uh, there's certain things that happen sometimes where uh, people overthink stuff that's being said. Yeah. And uh, you might have to stop doing something for a while, but then you <laughs> yeah. come back to it. Preach it, brother. And. Uh, you rock and roll, baby. You rock and roll. There's no staying, no stopping. Yeah, there's no stopping. Say what you will, but I'm gonna say it better. <laughs> but I think the flip side of that, I'm gonna go censored just because the flip side of that, <laughs> you wouldn't have to listen to the stupid stuff people say. You could just yeah. censor them and be like, "Be shut up, be when they talk." Oh, on network, tel- like on like channel two or something. Yeah, when you gotta, you no, I mean oh. like in real life. Let's say somebody says okay, something oh, that you don't like, that. you could just be like it's censored. <laughs> Like, I, I love, like, if you could, if someone's talking to you and you don't like what they say, you could just go censored. And then you have to stop talking. That'd be fun. Make the app. I mean, that's the that's app that you need to make. You hit the button and, like, it, that's a good world. You know, when phones are, like, embedded in, uh, when phones are embedded in people, that could actually work. Like, you know, when you eventually have that jawbone in, that's right. embedded in your. It's a mute cheek. button. <laughs> no, well, you, you open up the app and Derek D, you accept each other as friends and you're giving the okay to mute each other. Yes, that's right. Just oh, yeah, when you start saying something you don't like, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with First, uh, First Amendment rights, man. Like, 
If you don't like something, you, everybody listening to this podcast right now, ready? You don't like it? Turn it off. That's uh, right. Those that's people it. are gone now. That's it. They're gone. You're gone from. We're gone but from you your know, lives. Now nobody's listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody is. There's one. We got two. One or two people. You know what I mean? But like, if you don't like it, turn it off. Leave everybody else alone. You just don't bring people down with your negative, horrible existence. That's right. Is that bullying? No, that was nice. Right. That was yeah. well said. Yeah, and, and if someone's pursuing something. You know, that they, they love and it's a passion. Don't knock them for it. Right? Don't, don't try to get in the way of their dreams. Don't knock them down a few pegs. You, you can make that star, like, tinker and maybe fall for a little bit. But then another star bursts. Bursts up from the ashes. That's right. It shines. It just gets bigger shines and brighter, so bright. man. Shines right. so bright. Top and bottom, number two, Radio Shack or Amazon. <laughs> Derek Day. You know what? I got to go old school. Radio Shack on top, uh, Amazon on the bottom. Although, you can find anything you want on Amazon, and I've probably ordered more things with them than I've been in Radio Shack. But hey. So, know. basically what you said makes no sense. So, we're going to move to Joe Gatto. <laughs> I mean, you know where I stand with my Radio Shack. Uh, it's Radio Shack on top because come talk to me, Amazon, when you've been around as long as Radio Shack. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to come talking with their drones and their trucks and their, and their products. Are you kidding me? Amazon is completely on top. It's, it's, it's true. It's not even a question. You like know Radio what? Radio Shack is closing stores. Oh, Radio Shack Prime is better than Amazon Prime. <laughs> there is no Radio Shack Prime. Not yet. We all work it on yeah, we're it. We're working on it. Wait, hold on a second. Yeah. Think, think about the name for a second. Radio Shack. Like, <laughs> like back when it was a shack of radio. Back when electric, electronics first came out, it was yep. like, yo. We're going to call it Radio, radio Shack. Man. What do you, What should we call it? Radio <laughs> Emporium? No, no, man. Radio Empire? No, I got it. I castle? got this. No, we don't need a castle. You just need a shack. <laughs> with a Radio Shack. With a couple wires, a light bulb, and a ham radio. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. The ham radio, that's right. <laughs> yeah, man. I bought my CB radio from Radio Shack. There True it story. is. You had a CB radio. I did. I'm sorry. I used to talk to nobody in my neighborhood. I had no friends. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> so Radio Shack on top. <laughs> uh, top or bottom, number three, Biff Tannen or Johnny Sweep the Leg Lawrence. Oh, that's Oof. a tough one. That is a, that's a tough one, man. I mean, people that might not know, Biff Tannen was the bully from uh, if you Back to the Future. <laughs> yep. And Johnny was from uh, the real... Karate, karate Kid, kid right? Yeah. Some people, I don't know. What was Not Jaden Smith, Karate Kid. Yeah, no, no. Is there a Ralph Johnny? Macchio. Is it like sweep the leg, somebody else? Put him in a... No. No, it's not a sweep the leg situation, but there is a there is a guy that's no good. What's his name? It's some fat Asian kid. Sid- I don't know Sydney Lesperance, our fact checker. Cha-ching! Fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go with... Uh, I think I just I'm mean, Back to the Future one. I can't. I mean, Karate Kids. I kind of. But Back to the Future on top, Karate Kid on the bottom. But, so Johnny on the bottom, Biff on top. But they're so close. Ugh. Oh, I mean, when, when you know when George McFly knocks out Biff, it's just better. I think it's better than the than the, and kick. the crane. Yeah. Well, the cra- the I mean, crane like I mean, transcends I, generations. That's why I put Johnny on top. I mean, Johnny took a better hit <laughs> than Biff Tannen. But did. like that, it didn't make sense. As much as I love that scene, it doesn't really make sense because he's, he's you're not allowed to do that. Yeah, why, you're why not, not allowed to make contact in the, the face. face. That's the number one rule, and then he kicks <laughs> him in the face, like, and then he wins. <laughs> it's it's a huge plot hole. I never <laughs> ever thought of it that way. You're right. That it's, movie's the bump. It's number one of the 13 biggest plot holes of all movies of all time. <laughs> it's a, a number one on the list. But Daniel, I love you, Daniel. Yeah, yeah, Daniel LaRusso. Daniel LaRusso. Did you guys see? Oh, Dude. I got my plug. <laughs> uh, you're saving it? I'll save it. All right, I got to say uh, Johnny Lawrence on top. I, I feel like he's the better bad guy. You know what I mean? And he was like a bad guy for all of 1980. You know, if it he wasn't... Was a, yeah, it's true. If it badass. wasn't him, it was the other blonde hair guy from like Less Than Zero, uh, Spade, but, uh, James Spader. James Spader. Right? If it wasn't him, it was Johnny. Like, <laughs> you, it could have been Sweep the Leg, James Spader. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it works, right? Yeah, man, that's a that's a good one though. That's a good top or bottom. Uh, that's probably the best top or bottom we've ever had. It ever might be that, well, that one. Good, I want to ask you this question before we move on. Then, if you were to add a third, right? Because I, I there was one person I was going to put other than Biff and Johnny. Who would it be? Did you have it? You had. I, ha- it. So I, now know, I know. I'm basically trying to guess the yeah. third one. Yeah. Okay. And you don't need to say. You don't. Uh, go ahead. I don't want to give. I, w- I wanted. I wanted to take a second to think about it. Can we come back to it? Yeah, we can come back to it. I may have one. Go ahead. Ivan Drago? No, that would have been good though. Uh, I, he's not really. Uh, yeah, uh, he's not a bully in the same sense. Although he's a 1980s bad guy, you know. Yeah. Gatto. I'm gonna take a second. You gonna take a second? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next one then. You, unless you want me to tell you. Well, I was thinking the brothers from Goonies. Oh, I thought you were gonna say the Fatellis. The Fatellis, yeah. Hey, you. Hey guys. Yeah, <laughs> that, now, ch- listen. 
Chunk. He was Chunk was bullied. Chunk was absolutely bullied. But, yeah, Chunk, owned, but Chunk owned that shit later. I mean, the because, truffle shuffle. The truffle shuffle. You know, uh, like like Gatto, uh, you surpassed your uh, bullied people. I, I don't even know how to say this properly. Bulliers. Chunk Chunk did the same. <laughs> no, Chunk was the fat kid. Right. Who are you talking no, about? No, the the brother that the Fratellis had. Oh the, no, yeah, yeah, Slaw, yeah, Slaw, 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 not Chunk. Yeah, Captain Chunk, Chunk was bullied too, but he was amongst friends, so it wasn't really bullying. No, Chunk they, was not bullied at all. But Sloth was. Sloth was. Yeah. And Chunk, yeah. who was kind of the one made fun of. Yeah. Bonded. They bonded with the sloth. Are we? Are we doing movie the- reviews? Hey, <laughs> I was gonna say that the oh. other one. I was gonna use the redheaded dude with the backwards hat from A Christmas Story. Oh, all right, yeah. And I don't know his uh, name. It was like, no, I don't no. know his name. I, w- I would still pick Johnny. You know what I'm talking about, though? Yeah, I would still pick Johnny, though. Yeah, so, all right. So, top or bottom, number four, Anonymous or John Hancock with no D. <laughs> okay, so these are printed outs for everyone at home that can't see, and it says Anonymous or John Hancock. Hancock spelled H-A-N-D-C-O-C-K. Sometimes there's a D. So, do you mean... Anonymous as in... <laughs> I'm off track here. Do you mean yeah. anonymous as in the the uh, social mobilization group? Or are you talking anonymous as in not signing it? You could look at it any way you would like to look at it, in my opinion. Because we're, we're, we're cousins, I'm yeah. telling you. I think it's you think not signing it versus signing it. 100%. I, <laughs> did, I didn't type this. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that, Shut up! That is gotcha. What, like, so but I, just, I would say anonymous... I don't, uh, it's free. Right. Anonymously, or, or are you going to... Put that John Hancock on the paper with no dig. Uh, um, I'm going um, John Hancock on the top, anonymous on the bottom. Why? Because I, 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 I own that shit, right? Yeah. You're not a coward. No. You're not. A, you're not a. This a, is me. A spineless human being. Here I am. If you're gonna, I did what I did. I said what I said. You're gonna own up to it. I'm gonna sign it. Give me you, a pen you know, right now. You know who'd probably be anonymous? I'll call him up on the phone right now, see if I get him in the line. But you ever watch uh, Breaking Bad? Jesse Pinkman is the kind of person that would be anonymous. Je- Jesse, are you there? <laughs> Yo. No, <laughs> bitch. You ever you ever write in a, a letter like you know complaining about something like I don't know your meth wasn't delivered on time? Yo, it's like I text, bro. I don't even write nothing. <laughs> Do you, so, so we know your number comes across. I don't know it's you unless you're in my phone. Hey, yo, Mr. White, should I be talking to this guy? He's like, I buy some meth, and like, yo, I don't even sign nothing. I think it was pens, bro. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Got the pitch is a nice touch. Uh, uh, anonymous I, or John Hancock? I would say John Hancock all the time. I mean, if if you're afraid that uh, if you're afraid that people know you said it, you shouldn't say it. Oh, that's a great way to put it. I mean, I yeah, lift. John Hancock all the way. I mean, you're a complete coward if you have something to say and you don't want to own up to it, right? I mean, that's yep. speak that's, up for yourself. I'm afraid to even ask this last one. <laughs> Top or bottom, number five, anti-bullying. <laughs> Or the pussification of America. <laughs> Is that a bad term? They're kind of like, yeah. If one doesn't have you to say do the coddling. With the other. I mean, what's bad about the term? That it's being, uh, it's opposition in this game to bullying, or that it's not, it's the opposition to bullying. Because it's not like one doesn't really necessarily have. Well, to do no, the other. in the arena, they're, no, they're normally equated as the other side of this. They are normally equated as cause and effect. They're saying like anti-bullying is making the pussification of America. That's what that's what that's the uh, stance a lot of people take. But that's but you're, what you're saying is different. What you're saying is coddling your children. Uh, creates a weaker yeah, environment. You're not, yeah, you're not making you're not letting them be uh, prepared for what life is going to send. Hundred percent. Yeah. So okay, Derek. Uh, <laughs> um, what, what is it? Isn't it's, top better? Yeah, always. Yeah, so it's like, what's? Um, I mean, when you win, when you're in gymnastics and you're I, first, I, second, and third place, number one's always higher. That's always on top. No, I, yeah, I know. So I, I think I put anti-bullying on top because you want, you know, we, we don't, we don't want bullying. We don't want bullying. No. But the reason this is a difficult question is we don't want our, a, a weaker we, America. Yeah, we, yeah, we also don't. Want, we, uh, yeah, that's that's a tough one. But I would put anti-bullying on top because I'm anti-bullying. But at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that like, you know, uh, we, we don't take away the, the like the whole thing of like competition. It, it's a tough one. It, it's a it, it's a it's a tough subject. It's it a, is. Bullying sucks. It's wrong. But at the same time, I don't think the College of America is necessarily bullying. It's more of like, it's more of like... Not play. preparing your children for life. Yeah, go play yeah. in the dirt. You got to play in the dirt. You know what I mean? Put the device down for a minute and let the kid go play in the dirt. Yeah. 
I mean, the white van's not going to come rolling down the street all the time. That's what people are afraid of, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They're not scooping up children all the time. You know what? You got to educate. They, even they take time off. It's weird. You know, I think the bottom line is raise your kids right and hope they make the right decisions. Yeah. You know, when, when it comes to them making fun of someone else. And they, they need to know that that's wrong. You know, don't. I always tell my nephew, I'm like, if you see a kid and they're not picking them, they're always picking them last, you know, when you're playing sports. and Because, you know, you're like one of the ones that's always picked first. Just. One day, pick him first. That will make him feel great for weeks. Yeah. Hey, mom, dad, I got picked first when we played kickball today. Yep. I just remember when I was a kid, I got picked first or second. It's a high, man. Yeah. You know, and then I've, I've been picked last. It sucks. It's that. That's just little things you could do to. Yeah. You know, be, battle this stuff when they get older. It doesn't happen. Kind mm -hmm. of thing. You know. Mm -hmm. Get on top or bottom. Oh, I mean, anti-bullying goes on top. Clearly, right? Yeah. For me, it's no question. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I had such a great topic that I wanted to talk about, uh, and I was like, let me write that down in case Gatto goes long before I forget it. And you didn't go long, and I forgot. <laughs> you know? The use of technology, you know, um, you know, let's use it. Use it to, de to defeat evil. You know what I mean? 100%. Like, I love the fact that, you know, get those GPS chips put in your kids, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Wire your house with, with cameras that you can watch from your phone. Uh, you know, I mean, like, is that where we're going? I'm kind of saying it in jest. That you know already I mean? happens. Not where we're going. That's a thing. Yes. <laughs> you, you think a, kids are, are GPS? Oh, uh, no, I mean, like, no, I thought you said cameras in the home. That's oh, well, that, yeah, yeah, that's, you know, everybody's got a drop yeah. cam or a, a security system. Well, I know some parents, they get their kids right. phones that have minimal um, capabilities just so they can look at their phone and know where their kid is. You know, obviously, it's not implanted on them. They could have dropped it or lost it. But for the most part, that kid, you can track. Yeah. So does technology take a does it does it have a place in uh, you know anti bullying does it is it can yeah, it be I used mean, as you, positive technology can turn the whole thing around if you you know like someone's post that they said you for somebody that feels alone in the world somebody puts up a picture of something they drew and a stranger likes it it could do amazing things for that person that yeah. feels alone it feels like somebody noticed what they did with a click of a button. Just a click of a word instead of typing "this sucks," which is, you know, eight, uh, nine keystrokes. Yeah. You know, just hit the star. Just, just click the like. You know, or don't say nothing. Like I said, it takes more to not say anything. Yeah. You know? It takes more work to uh, do harm than it does to do good. It, yeah, that, that, that's so true. I yeah. think yeah, I think I mean because the the, the interweb is a place where kids, you know, that feel alone. And, and I talk about bullying a lot because I and I say kids, but you know, people are bullied too all, all throughout life. I say kids because that's where, you know, I think that's where you make the difference. You won't find an adult, uh, you won't find an adult bully if you stop when he's a kid, right? Yeah, so that's kind of I, I think that's kind of where, where you have to, you know, focus. But, you know, there's people in the workplace. There's, you know, 35-year-old. I hear people, there's 35-year-old people that I talk to on one that people at their work, they feel bullied at work or whatever it is. And, and they feel just as alone as that, you know, 13, awkward 13-year-old who's, trying to figure out their body and, uh, you know, their sexuality and everything that's going on. So it's, uh, it's definitely a, a tough world, and I think technology could play a major role in it, especially, like, flipping it with Dance Man, right? Yeah, totally. And then there's a return on stuff like that, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you get it all the time on Practical Jokers as well. Like, someone, you better have responded to someone, like, I can't believe respond. You know, I've been down. I watch a show. It makes me laugh, makes me smile, and I'm so, like, like, it just uplifts my day, whatever. The same thing and, and it happens with Fastlane Daily as well. It's like, mm -hmm. You just you take the time to respond to people, and even if you don't, they just send you a message like, "Hey, this is you know, I was having a bad day, you know, I'm overseas, you know, and, and I watch your show every day, and it keeps me grounded, and, and I smile and laugh, or I had a bad day, and you lifted it. I mean, it's it's a, it's a good feeling on for you as well. There's no good reason to be bullying when you could feel awesome about yourself right. and you do that. <laughs> yeah. help out somebody. Yeah. That's, we, you know, we talk about this a lot. Like one of the best things about doing a podcast is connecting to your listeners, right? Yeah. So we love to talk to the PBR posse and we tweet back and forth with them and we always, you know, comment and we're very interactive with them. Like why on earth would you go on there to be negative right. with people? You know, it just... We, we could just call each other on the phone and not have to do this, right? If we <laughs> wanted to talk to each other for hours at end. <laughs> right? That's you true. Know, we do this, we do this to, to yeah. get out there and talk to people. So, I mean, you know, we, we definitely appreciate the supporters. And, you know, as they say, hate is going to hate. Ball is going to ball. That's right. Um, well, I hate to do this, but... <laughs> I'm going to play a little game. <laughs> that's what that music indicates on PBR Podcast. 
Gentlemen, you don't know what game we're about to play. No. It's a game I like to call <laughs> Rehashing Your Hashtag. Okay. Normally I do with our guest that was sitting in, but I figured since you two are here, we're talking about bullying. Okay. Someone's got to be the bully in the room. I figured it might as well be me. <laughs> I'm going to make fun of you guys. So I'm going to read you. I stalked both of your Twitters. Um, very interesting evening I had I w- doing so. Yeah, you probably have to go back to get some crazy well, hashtags. I got from a me couple on. from both of you. You didn't have to go that far, Derek. <laughs> I, you, had yeah. to go, you had to go about two hours ago from me. <laughs> did you look just on Twitter? Uh, yes, just did, Twitter. I just yes. did the Twitter. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, I have a time stamped here. So, you know, for example, uh, May 3rd, uh, 2015 at 1.23 a.m. at Joe Gatto <laughs> okay. said, uh, I can't believe American Pharaoh couldn't beat Mayweather. Hashtag Kentucky Derby May Pack 2015. <laughs> Before I should, you know, I didn't even finish saying what this game is about. I'm going to read you a tweet. You're going to have to d- tell me what the hell were you thinking with the hashtag okay. for the new listeners. Okay. All right. Good. So can't believe American Pharaoh couldn't beat Mayweather. Hashtag Kentucky Derby Maypack 2015. My question, Gatto, is why were you up at 1.23 a.m. on May 3rd? I was driving home from our show at Foxwoods. Yeah, okay. I was in the back of the car and just the, I was getting so car sick from the driver who was just stopping and going oh, that I, I, I had to like try to distract myself. So I hopped on Twitter and that's the joke I came up with because the Kentucky Derby and the May the same May weather fight with the same day. That was actually one of the uh, most celebrated days in sports. Derek, you and I were together that day. Oh, we watched the fight. There was the fight. There was the race. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah. an NHL and NBA playoff game. I think someone threw something and got points for it somewhere. <laughs> it's probably, right? Yeah, that's right. You didn't call me to hang out, though. No, you were at a, at a show. But, uh, yeah. but I, I, ironically <laughs> enough, uh, a few days later on May 15th, 2015 at 1231 p.m. at the Derek D said, what up? Hashtag Atlanta. I'm like so in you right now. Hashtag throwing bows. <laughs> Throwing out bows in Atlanta? Yo, man. Bows on bows? Bows on bows, throwing bows. But ludicrous. Throw them bows. He's from Atlanta, ATL. And I was all up in you, Atlanta. How's it feel? Go. There you oh, go. Felt wow. good. That's, that's kind of that's cool. You were in Atlanta. But uh, at, uh, on, on the 123.15, January 5th, 23rd, Sorry, 2015, January 15, okay. right? At 8.36 p.m., at Joe Gatto <laughs> said... At dinner at the Borgata AC. All set to order. Ravioli and the waiter hits me with tonight's specials, dot, dot, dot. Lobster Fra Diavolo. Hashtag power meal. Hashtag decisions. <laughs> Number one, you went to AC, you didn't call me. You're a jerk. Number two. <laughs> I didn't know about it either. Come on, man. Power yeah. meal. Hashtag yeah. decisions. Yeah, that's, it, it was power lunch, not power meal. It's a shout-out from the show. It's a quote from the show. I'm, I'm pretty sure I copy and pasted. Did you? I did. Did I put Power Meal? We can check it. Sydney Les Brown say our fact check. Okay, check it. Please well, fact check it. In the, uh, it's a running joke and impractical joke. It's a television show that I'm a star of. That uh, so bougie. when I order uh, Fra Diavolo, when Fra Diavolo <laughs> is on the, uh, on the menu, I have to order it, and it's part of the presentation that they made for me. I, uh, I think it's funny, though, that... Uh, so, all right, so you don't ever weigh raviolis versus Fra Diavolo. I'm, I'm 100% fraudy all, all the time. time. All the time. All the time. Okay. What am I? What am I? What am I, an idiot? Uh, hey. Uh, on uh, February 23rd, 2015, at 5.37 p.m., at the Derek D says, Hey, at M. Palano, some at Fastlane Daily fans are saying we need to introduce at Bob Shubin Jr. to the at P- uh, PPR podcast. <laughs> uh, hashtag. Hey, how about it? Oh, you say it, though. Who, me? How, well, how, how would Bob say that? I'm going to try to do the best impression. Okay, hey, hashtag like, what? Hey, how about it? No, no. Hey, no. Uh, hey how about it? Well, no, no, no. We got to get Bob Shubin Jr., Senior Jr. You want Bob Senior Jr., Senior Jr. to do it, or do you want Bob Ju- Shubin Jr.? Is my camera off? Are your camera's off. Bob, get over here. Hey, Bob. Show this, Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, how about I do it? I'm just over here. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I don't know. How do you feel about that, Derek using your hashtags and your saying? First of all, let me tell you something about Derek, right? Uh, he's the worst on Twitter. I'm the best. Follow me at Bob Schumer Jr. Hey, how about I give you a solid deal? Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what happened on uh, August 20th, 2014 oh. at uh, 9.07 p.m.? What, what do you mean? I mean, Derek, did you tweet this or did I tweet this? What was it? Sometimes I just want to put it out. On a devil's jersey to see what it feels like to be an dot 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 parentheses finish the s- sentence. It wasn't at Joe underscore Gatto. It wasn't at the, the Derek, Derek D. D. 
Oh, it was at M Polano. <laughs> That's right. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on a second. I, I don't know if you guys are, you don't understand how the game works. Oh yeah, we do. No, no, this we are. This is what's called I am flipping the script. script. I am bullying. This is me <laughs> bullying your it's, not, it's your. You have stupid tweets too. I think that's the. Why, <laughs> wait, what was my tweet? And what? 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 Is it first of all, I just put on a devil. I mean, I could honestly. I'll just open up your feed right now <laughs> and scroll, and I'm sure I can find something. I don't I, think this is funny though. I don't think people. If they want to see my Twitter, they can just go to my Twitter and and see it. They can see yeah, at Mempolano, but it's more fun if I make fun of you. <laughs> oh God! I mean, I do this professionally. You do. Yep. Oh, look at you. I mean, what do you got? You know what, too? Uh, yeah. I'm, first of all, let me talk to you about your profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Not as uh, You know, you want to be a supermodel so bad, but come Are on. you serious? <laughs> <laughs> You just drive one day, six days ago, you just did hashtag cake. <laughs> yeah, but you, you don't know the story of the cake, and anybody who follows me does. Uh, you just wrote hashtag cake. Well, let's talk about that for a second, Gatto. If you were at my uh, 40th I birthday was there. surprise party, uh, which you didn't come to. I had a baby. <laughs> I uh, mean, if I got a rock-solid <laughs> alibi. Derek made it. <laughs> I mean, Derek made my baby? What the fuck, <laughs> man? I, I, I've been meaning to talk to you, Joe. <laughs> oh. uh, magic cake. Uh, we during my birthday party, the Rangers were in a game seven, uh, an elimination, a game six elimination against the Caps. They were losing miserably by two goals. They brought out my cake, which was a New York Ranger hockey puck, oh, cool. which I tweeted out. You can take picture, you can see pictures on my Instagram. They put the candles in the middle. I shit you not. I they sang happy birthday. I Derek was there. I blew out the candles and they scored two goals and won the game. Whoa. So now every single game I have to eat magic cake. <laughs> and it's old at this moldy. I went to Tampa Bay and I met You brought it with you? No. So I called my mom, your aunt, yep. and I made her eat it. And there's pictures of her on my my Instagram oh, as well. So bad. She, it was moldy. My mom still did it. And they won. They came back and won. <laughs> that's a good mom. So make fun of my Twitter, man. You can't. It's there's nothing. <laughs> oh, I could. I just, just I don't said play hashtag golf. cake though. That's a great story. But if I'm just scrolling, I see hashtag cake. I don't know any of that backstory. Ranger cake. <laughs> Ranger puck cake. That would even be better, Ranger cake. Then I'm like intrigued. It's now you just hashtag sound like, magic cake. You sound like a fat bastard. That's what you Wait, sound did like. Did I just hashtag cake? Hashtag nothing cake. else? That's it. No, nothing else. Hashtag cake. <laughs> 9.36, 2014. We're going in the way back machine at 1.52 p.m. At the Derek D said, since hashtag Derek Jeter is retiring, looks like the Derek spotlight opened up for another Derek to step in. Mmm. <laughs> Which sneakers should I wear? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? You wrote that, bro. What's a sneaker reference there? I don't know. Something. It's not Jordan. <laughs> That's what Is there you a picture were... that goes along with it? I mean, I copy and paste. Oh, there's got to be a picture. There's got to be a picture. I mean, look in your Twitter feed. You can it's from it. four years ago. I think it's a picture of my, uh, my, my sneaker rack or something. It's got to be. Uh, but, but Derek Jeter did retire, so at the Derek D is, is, is the new, is the new, the new Derek. Is the new captain. Yeah. All right, here's, here's, one, here's the last one. Uh, January 13th, 2015, 3.20 p.m. at Joe Gatto. Shopping at Hollywood and Highland with Murr. A tourist asked us to take a pic of them with Mickey and Minnie. Hashtag, we ain't, we ain't Disney famous. Hashtag, power couple. <laughs> oh, that's right. Me and Mer were walking, and this couple's like, "Oh, could you? Can we take a picture?" And we thought they meant of us, so we went to oh. take a picture with them. And they wanted the fake, the like the bargain basement Mickey and Minnie that are on Hollywood and Highland. And so we literally took the picture of them standing with Mickey and Minnie, and we're like, "Thanks." Is that not like the, like the most um, in, like it, it, it in, internally? It might not be embarrassing at the moment, but internally, when you make that error. You feel dumb. You feel shit. a little dumb, yeah. Yeah, you feel dumb. Because, like, you're being nice. You're like, yeah, I'll totally take the picture. And they're like, how nice these guys will take the picture for us, not with us. It's so yeah, funny. It's like, that happened to me once in my life. And, like, just it's just embarrassing because I was so, like, it was during the Blue Shirt Buds. I was doing the outdoor se stadium series at Yankee Stadium, Rangers, Islanders. And we were running around doing our thing. And two people came up, came running up to me, and they they recognized me. And they were like, "Mike, blah, 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 blue shirt buds, we love the show." So um, first of all, somebody recognized me. I was like, "That's awesome." That's insane. That, yeah, that's a great never, feeling. So then we were like talking for a little while. And we were just like, Can, "You mind taking a picture?" And I was like, "Yeah, no problem." And then like we all stood there and looked at each other <laughs> for a second, like awkwardly. 
And then she like handed me her camera and they turned and <laughs> so they wanted me to take a picture of them yeah. in front of Yankee Stadium, which was which made sense. Definitely made sense. But because they like recognized me, I was and it was the first time <laughs> one of the first times that it ever happened. You felt it was I like, felt internally like such a D bag. Uh, uh, I was know? in uh, I was in uh, New Orleans for uh, Casey Jost's bachelor party. So her his brother uh, Colin was with us, of course, and uh, we're walking around and this is when Colin just got the seat. Uh, he was on it for like half a year. Uh, at the news desk on uh, SNL, and we're walking around, and everybody was like, "Oh, you know, hey, oh my God, impractical jokers, can we take?" Because it was me, Sal, you know, like, "Can yeah. we take a picture? Take a picture?" And and Colin would always take the picture for us, yeah. right? And it was Colin Jost, the head writer of SNL, you know, world famous Colin, and uh, we'd always laugh at it, laugh at it. So then we're walking by this dark alley, and it was like late at night, and it's like two two thirty in the morning, three in the morning, and we take the corner, and this guy goes, oh, "Colin." He's like, oh, my God, I got to get a picture. And Colin's like, yeah, that's cool. He's like, my friends will take it, like, throwing it at us. And yeah. he goes, oh, do you practical jokers? <laughs> and we're like, ah. And he made Colin take the picture of us. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. That's awesome. <laughs> it was like, he's like, I can't even get one. Yeah. Derek, you get that a lot from FLD? Oh, we, I, I do get a, I do get a good amount randomly. It's happened more recently uh, than later. Like, out, like, out, like, port, like, port in Asbury Park at the bar or something happens a lot. But when I go to auto shows, yeah, like oh, a yeah. lot. It's like when you're in your wheelhouse. You know, yeah, like, when we go, course, yeah. we usually go to auto shows on press days, you know, so we have, we have more access and stuff. But then, for New York, at least, we go on a public day, and that's crazy. I feel like I'm like Justin Timberlake walking around that place. Yeah. yeah. It's a great feeling. But it's, it's cool, really it's cool. cool to meet all the people who support you. It's yeah, and, and, awesome. and it's really cool, like, when it's randomly out somewhere. But it, it never never happens when I'm just Standing next to like a really hot chick that I'm just talking to. <laughs> I just, it's always like yeah. just dudes. It's always alone, right? Oh, yeah. man. No, I'm with my buddies yeah. or whatever, but like, man. Like, oh, there's been like girl friends, and that was a purposeful pause. Yes. That, that I'm with, and, and they're just like, man, if you were. If you, 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 you wish you could work on the timing when like, you yeah. know, it's like, oh, I'll take it's like, this hold bit that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be great because people will be able to take pictures with us when we do the live PBR podcast coming up. Ooh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good idea. Are that's you, a great idea. What do you think? Do you want to do a live show? Oh, nobody would come. <laughs> I don't think so. I, would they? I don't know. Put it out there to the posse. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Maybe. You're going to be there? I go. Yeah. What, what if, if you guys have me? What if we do something like this? What if we do like, um, well, Gatto will come. It'll be, he's our featured guest host, right? He'll come down. Uh, and why don't we have like we'll, we'll ask Ming? Maybe Ming will come and uh, and then maybe like what say you or, maybe, or yeah. the angry ginger? We'll call some of our podcasting friends. We'll do a, so you do like a podcasting party. What do you think? Do you, know, think, you think people want to come like, see that? I don't. I don't know. Let's let's ask them. we could ask that. We have the power to ask them. Well, let's put it out to you guys. Do you want to see a PBR hosted? Podcast, Podcast extravaganza. extravaganza. There yeah, it is. Yeah. Live. Live, like on a stage with an audience, but then they could, uh, we can live stream it. Oh, we'll periscope it. We'll Peris stream yeah. it. Be fun. Well, if you periscope it, nobody's going to come out to see it live. Uh, that's true. We're not going to do that. We're, you got to come see it live. Yeah, we still have some kinks to work out, but yeah. if you want to see it, just hit us up. It's at their app. idea. It's got to be your, there, right? Yeah, it's your idea, guys. I mean, really, this is all your fault right now. Yeah. Just let us know at PBR Pod and tell us if uh, you think we should do it. I think that could be fun. I, I think it'd be fun. I mean, I've seen I've seen a couple of live podcasts, and they've, they've always been a good time. We do some with the tenderloins. I've seen what say you live. It's fun. Mm -hmm. We do, I, incorporate yeah, we the audience yeah, totally. with games, sh have Topper them shout bottoms. out stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. Maybe maybe they'll get to meet Dennis. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bring we, people bring people up on stage, jump on the mic for a minute or two. Oh, that'd yeah. be great. I love the idea of uh, like a top or bottom or a what's in the box driven by the by the listeners. You know what I mean? Uh, like, a top or yeah. top or bottom interactive top or bottom would be fun, right? Yeah. You get it from the audience. Yes. They, they throw them out. Yeah, that's cool. Like you know, maybe we have Dennis like collect them. Yeah. But, you know, write down your top or bottom at the door, and then we they throw them in a hat, and Dennis and takes the best five, and we let those that person get up and read it or something. That could be a lot of fun, fun, man. Yeah. I'm in. At PBR Pod, let yeah, us know. Let us know if you have any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, the show is all about the revolution. And I like to always ask people, you know, what does that sound mean to them, or when the last time they heard that sound is? Gatto, when's the last time you heard that sound? We've probably asked you this before. It's the last time I did this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the last time you had a you went to Radio Shack and Radio tried Shack. Out the computer. Yes, when I bought my last purchase. Actually, that's the sound, the same sound that the cast registers at Radio Shack made. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound of the armchair futurist, right? So the uh, revolution of this podcast is bullying or anti-bullying. So in the year 2050, you're sitting back in your recliner. What does the landscape of bullying? look like has it been eradicated is it the same is it worse uh, no i think in 2050 
it may have reached critical mass. I think it would really, uh, I think there would be, there's going to be a big discussion coming up in, uh, in, I would say, within my lifetime, you know, next two decades or so, where people will really put back into perspective parenting and all the problems that happen because lack thereof. Everything from, uh, you know, acts of terrorism, ter terrorism by young children or, uh, you know, shootouts or whatever, whatever to have gang violence, any of that stuff. All of it really is going to get traced back to parenting. So I think uh, by then it probably would be very much in the spotlight. I mean, once like once people start talking about it, celebrities get involved, people that people look up to get involved. I guess it changes the landscape. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I would think it's a, it, it's 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 better then. It's, it's, it's better than it is now with, with, with in that and in the, in the bullying with the subject of bullying. Yeah. Yeah. I would hope. I just hope. It's positive. I'm thinking positive. <laughs> it's not. A, it's gotten a lot better. I don't think it'll ever go away, quite frankly. I mean, don't, don't you think, like, technology-driven bullying? Human nature. Don't you, like, if you bully somebody, well, I guess it's the, it's the case of anonymity, right? If you bully somebody on Twitter as M. Polano, everybody knows you're being a bully. You automatically are, are an idiot. You're a, a dick. A jerk. You're destroying yourself. But I guess... Well, you don't have to put your name. You don't have to put your name. So that's the thing. So. There's your anonymous versus uh, John Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes there's a D, man. I gotcha. And sometimes there's not a D. <laughs> and we've established that. Yep. Well, that's the B-Side episode one of that was PBR great, Podcast. Man. Thank you for coming back and or tuning in for the first time. Yeah, there's some great episodes up right now. Uh, if, you're digging, if you're digging these, check it out. Right now up on our feed, you'll see Adam Richmond, Colin Jost, Audrey, Kate Geiger, the angry ginger, Jason Parsons. Um, there's a bunch of stuff. Joe Gatto's in the house, so check it out. If you like it, stay tuned, man. And if you don't, tune out. See you later. <laughs> Just tune out, shut it off. Don't subscribe. Yeah. And don't write a letter. You know what I mean? <laughs> If you do like it, hit that subscribe button That's right. and write all the letters you want. Derek D. Yeah, I mean, we're, we, we've been doing this a while, but now we're back at it. And if you're listening, please subscribe at PBR Pod on Twitter, at PBR Pod on Instagram. You know, we're on that Periscope. So just follow us. We, we're, we're a great, we're, we're a blast. We are a good time. We're fun. PBRpodcast.com. You can Facebook, Twitter, Instagram us. Give us some love and we will love you back. See you. So that's the one time I have a plug and he doesn't ask me. I was about to say, where's your plug? Yeah. Wait, we don't.